Hello everyone, now we will start the tensile testing of fabric. So, the strip test which is very common for fabric tensile testing. So, here the samples are cut in 60 millimeter by 300 millimeter parallel to warp or weft. Okay. Suppose this is a fabric as we have discussed in the sampling section. So, we cannot use the sample close to the selvage. So, we will select sample from here. The sample is cut suppose we want to test the warp strength. This is the sample we are cutting the length is 30 centimeter and here it is a 6 centimeter. This is the length ok. Now, and after that what we do this sample it is a 30 centimeter and it is a 6 centimeter and we start fraying out the yarn because we have cut the yarn here fabric. So, it may so happen that the same warp due to it is some angle same warp may not be continuing what actually we want we want the continuity in the warp because we are trying to test the end. So, there during cutting it may so happen this one end it is cut in between it goes in between in between it is ending. So, in that so we try to fray out the edge ends edge yarns we are fraying out keep it to bring it down to 5 centimeter. So, we are fraying out from both the sides to bring it the ultimately up to 5 centimeter and also it is a 30 centimeter. So, 5 centimeter from top and 5 centimeter from bottom will go under the jaw. So, effectively it will become 20 centimeter length and 5 centimeter of width. This is the effective specimen size between the jaws. Okay. So, fraying the threads from both sides of the width of width to bring down width of effective width is it is a 50 millimeter. Okay. So, 5 centimeter bringing down and rate of extension is 50 millimeter per minute and the gauge length is 20 centimeters. So, 5 as we have already mentioned. So, this is the effective specimen size and the rate is 50 millimeter per minute and this is the instrument. So, then after that we just uh, put in the jaw this fabric and this constant rate of extension type of machine here it is a bottom jaw is fixed and top jaw is moving and fabric gets extended okay, stressed and we measure the breaking load. If we see the animation here now this this started moving ok. Now, after clamping it is clamped, gauge length is there, now it has not started moving. So, it is gauge, now it has started moving and this bowing effect is there that and then it is it breaks. So, stress strain curve we can get from this, okay. this is the stress strain curve from there we can get the breaking load, this is the breaking load and this is the breaking extension. So, in this way we can calculate the energy required everything we can calculate here it is simply stress strain curve load elongation curve of fabric.
and the sample is pretensioned at 1 percent of probable breaking load. So, we know the if we know the breaking load, it is probable breaking load, expected breaking load, we have to have some pretension. Why do we need pretension? Just to remove any crimp or any other uh, fold, any um, crimp effect. So, we uh, have some pretension and in case of any improper joy. So, suppose the jaw pressure is very high. In that case, there may be some jaw breakage. So, that those fabrics we have to reject. Okay. Either there may be jaw breakage or may be jaw slippage also. So, in that case, so the any breaks that occur within 5 millimeter of jaw should be rejected. That means, that 5 within 5 millimeter means that had occurred within the jaw. After that, it has come out okay, due to extension and for heavily milled so fabric like where it is not possible to take out the threads. So, we do not need to fray out. So, in that case we do not take the initial width of the sample 60 millimeter, we directly take 50 millimeter. So, directly the our sample size effective sample size we take okay, and 30 millimeter that is the size there. Heavily milled fabric like woolen fabric, some felted fabric, this type of fabric we can use 50 millimeter by 300 millimeter gauge length. And similar to the tensile tester, another simple tester is a simple testing arrangement, which, which is called a grab test. And grab test basically it is it's in for most of the practical purpose practical application the the strip test strip tensile test the result does not actually reflect the actual performance because the any practical uh, application we do not use a, as a strip as a sample maybe in uh, or apparel or maybe in any technical textile like in geotextile if we see a fabric is placed under the soil where the stones are there okay it's not in the form of strip it's the total fabric width and the gripping point is somewhere else at in between. So, that is in even in the apparel suppose it is being loaded it is I want to uh, have some stress value on the fabric. The fabric here it is not in the form of strip here actually it is a grabbed grabbed in between. So, it is fundamentally it is different from the strip test and jaw faces are considerably narrower than the actual fabric length. No need to fray the fabric because we are actually gripping suppose this is the fabric and we are not gripping like strip test throughout the this width we are gripping at the mid point. Okay. So, we do not need to fray out the threads actual sample is okay. and it is a quicker we do not have to fray, fray we do not have to jaw it properly you simply put uh, cut the fabric and put under the this jaw okay. and it is quicker method and speed is adjusted. So, that the sample breaks at 20 plus minus 3 second it is the same as the strip test also. Now, this is the graph this is total width full width of the fabric and here it is being grabbed it is a jaws are much smaller in dimension okay, width wise. So, basic 
issue here is that it is a it gets assistance from the adjacent yarn ok adjacent yarns beyond the the reach of the this jaw ok that means it gets help. So, it adds to the strength of the fabric. So, effectively the grab strength is higher than the strip strength when in strip strength only the yarns under the this uh, jaw under the grip of the jaw are coming into picture, but here in addition to this adjacent fabric is also helping, but this grab strength result is actually it is very close to the practical value. Now, we will try to solve different numericals okay, related to the strength, strength of maybe bundle strength we will try to solve numerical of fabric strength. First let us see the Presley strength, okay. it is a bundle strength in a Presley fiber strength tester the breaking load of cotton fiber bundle is 2.5 pound and mass is so in Presley strength tester or in stelometer what we have to the as we have mentioned the the jaw size of jaw or dimension of jaw is are exactly same they are interchangeable ok and after breaking so if we want to get the gram per text value we must know the mass of the bundle. So, in this test always after testing we take the mass of the bundle. Okay. So, the cotton bundle is the breaking load is 2.5 pound and the mass of the bundle is 22 milligram. What is the Presley index and bundle tenacity in gram per text? So, this is the question. Now, it is a simple direct formula. Presley index is breaking load in pound and bundle weight in milligram. And if we want to convert the Presley index as we have seen earlier for 0 gauge length, it is a value is 5.3. Here it is a given, it is a this is the 0 gauge length, you know, found to be this, it is a in 0 gauge length form. Okay. So, this is the Presley index. So, 2.5 by 2, 1.25 is the Presley index, and the length of the fiber bundle here in Presley for 0 gauge length it is approximately 11.78 millimeter, approximately you can say 12 millimeter gauge length, and bundle tenacity in gram per text if we multiply it by 5.36 for 0 gauge length it is a 6.7 gram per text of the cotton. So, bundle strength and this value in it is in for 0 gauge length. Okay. So, why uh, what is the 0 gauge length here? So, we must know the concept of 0 gauge length here. So, in if we see the Presley tester, this is the jaw, one jaw, another jaw is this one is another jaw okay. and if we have if you see the fiber fiber bundle this is in almost parallel fiber bundle and after that what we do we cut this fabric we cut the this fabric by knife. Okay. Now, this is situation 1 and after the cutting okay. and this is the fibers. These are the fibers. Okay. Now, this length 
why 0 gauge length? There is no space between the fabric fiber, but this is jaw. So, there is the gauge length, there is they are in contact, okay, these two jaws. This length is typically around, around say 11.8 millimeter, okay, 11.78 millimeter or approximately say it is 12 millimeter, it is for 12 millimeter in stellometer. Okay. Now, this is the gauge length and after that after breakage what happens? The this uh, will get disentangled and the fibers will be under the grip of the top jaw and bottom jaw. Then we have to open this fibers and then this is from top jaw bundle and this is from say bottom jaw and this total we have to take the mass and as per this numerical it is a 2 milligram and during and when in the machine in the instrument this will be loaded and the load will be measured here okay, separating load. So, that is the situation here. So, this is uh, the bundle strength here it is coming out to be so 6.7 it is a directly we can use this formula. Okay. Next numerical is that stellometer. In stellometer in addition to the zero gauge length there is a provision we can increase the gauge length to 3 millimeter. We can add one strip metal strip which will which is having 3 millimeter length width 3 millimeter thickness that we can insert. So, that means the gauge length will be 3 millimeter, but effective length of the fiber bundle will be 12 millimeter plus 3 millimeter it will become 15 millimeter. Okay. So, that is the thing that situation. So, next problem is on stellometer. In a stellometer, the breaking load of cotton of a cotton fiber bundle was found to be 1.5 kg and 0.994 kg with 0 and 3 millimeter gauge lengths respectively. Okay. And the mass of tested fiber bundles were 2 millimeter and 2.1 millimeter respectively. Okay. So, fiber bundles milligram 2 milligram and 2.1 milligram respectively. What will be the bundle strength at 0 gauge length and at 3 millimeter gauge length? That is the question. Now, try to see the solution step wise. The bundle tenacity is the breaking load in kg multiplied by length of the sample in millimeter divided by the mass of the fiber in milligram. So, fiber bundle this is the standard formula to get the tenacity in terms of gram per tex. Okay. Same formula we can use for yarn also gram per tex only that the length of the yarn and the uh, mass is required. Okay. So, this is the gram per tex. Now, the values are given. Okay. What which value is given? So, let us see the condition length of the fiber bundle in stellometer is approximately 12 millimeter with 0 gauge length and with 15 millimeter with 3 millimeter gauge length. Sample fiber jaw, okay. same fiber jaw is used as a Presley tester with 3 millimeter gauge length the length of the fiber bundle will become 15 millimeter this data we know that means the length of the sample is known here okay and mass is known and breaking load is known then we can simply calculate okay so at zero gauge length the breaking load is given 1.25 kg mass of sample is 2 milli milligram and the bundle tenacity is come out to be 1.25 multiplied by 12, 12 is the length divided by the mass in milligram. So, it is coming out to be 7.5 gram per tex. Okay. Now, if we increase the same cotton, if we increase the 
this uh, uh, gauge length. So, we will get the value which will be lower than the 0 gauge length because same factors like weak link effect similar weak link effect will be there in bundle strength if in other gauge length has increased typically we should get the value lower than that. And one important thing is here one has to mention here we cannot always have bundle even if the gauge length is constant like 0 gauge length we cannot have the same bundle mass. Okay. Suppose for same 0 gauge length we test the second sample it may not be 2 milligram it may be it will be different it may be little bit higher or lower, but accordingly it is expected that the breaking load will change. Okay. If it is mass is more that means breaking load will be proportionally higher but the ultimately the breaking bundle strength should be close to that. Okay. This is the value and 3 millimeter gauge length the breaking load is given, mass of sample is given and bundle tenacity is here it was 12 millimeter and here in 3 millimeter gauge length it will become 15 and it is coming out to be 7 point 1 gram per text cotton. Okay. So, that means, what we are getting? We are getting little bit lower gram per text for same cotton with higher gauge gauge length. Okay. Next is that in a tensile tester, it is a yarn tensile, yarn tenacity. In a tensile tester, the mean breaking load is of 30 takes yarn is 500 gram force. What is the tenacity of the yarn it is very simple simply divide it. Okay. It is a breaking load in gram force by linear density in tex. Okay. So, we can simply divide the gram force by tex and it will give us the value 500 divided by 30 it is 16.67 gram per tex. Okay. This is the result. Now, next numerical is that it is a fabric tenacity. Okay. Now, normally in strip test we get the value in terms of kg or newton or something. Okay. It is in terms of load value we get, but here it is asked that a tenacity what will be the tenacity of fabric in gram per tex. If we see the fabric tenacity it is normally not expressed in terms of load it is expressed in terms of gram per tex because the if the width of the fabric changes or if the say mass per unit area just to compare the fabric of different mass per unit area the tenacity value it is expressed in terms of gram per tex. Suppose for same fabric same similar if I use instead of 200 gram per square meter if I use say 300 gram per square meter the breaking load value will definitely increase, but we have to see whether the tenacity value is increased or not in that case to compare the tenacity of fabric actual the strength of the fabric we have to compare in terms of gram per tex not in terms of the breaking load. Breaking load will definitely be higher for thicker fabric. Okay. So, a fabric of aerial density 200 gram per square meter is tested in a tensile tester that is strip tester with 5 centimeter wide strip and 20 centimeter gauge length. Okay. So, what the data has been taken it is a simple calculation we can take. Okay. The breaking load is found to be 45.5 kgm. Okay. What will be the tenacity of fabric in gram per tex? Okay. Now, this is the condition here. Now, that actual area of the fabric is 100 square centimeter that means 0 0.01 square meter and the mass of the 
test specimen is 2 gram because 200 gram per square meter and 200 multiplied by 0 1 it is a 2 gram length of the strip is 0.2 meter 20 centimeter and we want to measure here the text value text of the fabric under the under the test under test and we know the text value it is a mass of the sample by the length of the sample and mass of the specimen length of the specimen multiplied by L is the is the in that particular unit text unit the L, L is the it is a thousand. So, we can use this value here. So, mass of the specimen 2 gram length of the, the L is the thousand meter and the length of the specimen is 0.2 meter. So, it is coming out to be 10,000 text okay. and then what we can do when the tenacity of the fabric we can calculate here it is a breaking load in gram force per linear density in text it is coming out to be 4.55 gram per text. Now, the idea of using gram per text in, in place of the breaking load it is that suppose what we are doing we are taking a fabric of say say 300 gram per text and what we have found that the strength has become say 50 say 50 strength 50 gram per sorry 50 kg kg force now can we tell this fabric is stronger than earlier fabric earlier fabric it was 45.5 so we cannot compare we because our sorry this fabric is gram per square meter this is aerial density of the fabric is 300 gram per square meter earlier it was 200 gram per square meter. So, this 300 gram per square meter fabric. So, if we try to see if we can if we get the mass of the fabric the keeping all other constant the mass of the fabric will be 300 multiplied by 0 0.01 it is becoming 3 gram. 3 gram and the text will be what will be the text 3 multiplied by 1000 by 0.2 that means it will become 15000 text okay 15000 text and the it's a it's a 50 kg so 50 kg well 50000 gram divided by 15000 it will become say 15 by 3 okay 10 by 3 okay it's 10 by 3 so it will be 3.33 gram per text okay that means earlier with the lower even with the lower value of uh, breaking load the tenacity was 4.55 it's higher than this tenacity 3.33 that means the breaking load with we cannot compare the breaking load by breaking load of different types of fabric okay so to compare the ten uh, breaking tenacity to uh, the strength of the fabric we should compare in terms of tenacity of the fabric in terms of gram per text. So, here the idea is first you have to get the value of text of the strip okay, and then we can calculate. Okay. So, next the, the last segment we have reached here it is basically it gives us the another set of instrument one instrument which is 
which works in CRE principle. The principle is same as that of single Yan strain testing, but this is fully automatic. In UTM we test the single Yan strain testing, we put in the jaw manually, but here tensor rapid Ustad tensor rapid gives the automatic the gripping and automatic breaking. So, it is a for tensile testing of single yarn and uh, ply yarn. So, we have to feed the yarn in the form of a package okay, for a measurement of up to 1000 Newton, 1 kilo Newton without exchanging the force transducer. Okay. So, it is it's, it's a wide range of tensile uh, testing one um, range of uh, yarn we can test here. The clamping force the yarn tensioner and the suction off of the yarn can be programmed. Okay. We can actually program depending on the yarn type of yarn we can program the clamping, for, clamping force, we can program the yarn tensioner tension what how much tension it has to put and also uh, the suction off of the yarn okay that uh, the uh, how quickly the test will be done and that we can program here all numerical and graphical results are displayed on a video screen okay in a on a video screen we can uh, display all everything okay in the form of histogram load elongation curve and table form we can get. So, it it is totally automatic we get we have to only feed the cones or bobbin mainly typically bobbin ring bobbin you just put there and it will automatically test data large number of sample and give the histogram and everything it will give in packages are up to 20 packages are um, actually put we can in the uh, in the creel we can put and then it is automatically it, is me it measures the value and as it is it is a program it is uh, all the data are in kept in the memory we can recall we can for analysis for future reference we can recall this. So, calling up of test parameters of frequently tested yarn type from the memory we can just there is memory it is old version there are 40, but now it has improved a lot pneumatically actuated yarn clamps. So, it is a there is no physical uh, pressure it is a pneumatic uh, pressure is there and no spring nothing is there okay. and you can we can control the uh, pressure the clamping pressure is programmed. So, depending on the type of yarn we can program this clamping pressure and electronic elongation measurement. So, it is a elongation we can measure electronically and test speed it is a it is continuously you can adjust automatically it, it can uh, changed it can be adjusted from 50 millimeter per minute to so 5000 millimeter per minute. So, within that wide range we can change the test speed, test length can be changed and this instrument work in two modes in vertical mode and in also in horizontal mode. In if it works in horizontal mode it is continuously adjusted between 20 centimeter to 1 meter. With that range, 20 centimeter to 1 meter range, that we can adjust the length. Okay, it's a wide range. But in a vertical mode, it's a more uh, range is higher. It's a say 10 centimeter to 1 meter. So that within that range, continuously we can adjust. Okay, this these are the simple parameters of the particular machine. But uh, the working principle is uh, exactly same that we have discussed. It is basically it works in the, uh, the principle of train gauge principle. 
we have reached at the end of the tensile tester. Here we have discussed all the tensile related parameters. We have discussed the different uh, methods for measurement of tensile characteristics of textile material in the form of fiber bundle, in the form of single yarn, in the fabric and also uh, instrument for the dynamic measurement that constantly winding uh, tester. And we have also seen that the instruments work in different principles that is constant rate of traverse, constant rate of elongation and constant rate of loading. And also we have seen the there are various factors which affect the test result like rate of elongation, the gauge length. So, if we want to have perfect result, so we have to follow the standard procedure and also the test result can vary by improper jaw, improper placing of sample in the jaw. So, we must be very careful putting the fabric in the jaw. So, this uh, I think with this uh, that uh, we will get overall idea about the tensile characteristics of textile material. We have also discussed various numericals which uh, will enhance the better understanding of the principle and hope this section will help in, uh, in, in better understanding of the tensile characteristics and also in application one can uh, this uh, total this segment will help. Now, till then we will we'll, uh, uh, stop here and we will uh, we'll next class we will start with new uh, topic till then thank you.